والآن أدعو السيد ريتشر كينغ من المسابقة العالمية للجامعات لتصميم الأبنية المعتمدة على الطاقة الشمسية في وزارة الطاقة الأمريكية. Now I would like to invite Richard King, Director of the U.S. Department of Energy, Solar Decathlon. Good morning. My name is Richard King, and I'm so delighted to be in Dubai. This is an exciting city, and <clears throat> bringing the solar decathlon to Dubai will be very important uh, for your future. This, the competition is all about solving climate change, and what we want from you, the universities, not only faculty and students, is your creativity and inspiration applied to how do ordinary people live sustainably in and around their homes? Uh, it's a competition. It's a competition for universities, primarily architecture and engineering, to design from the ground up a solar-powered, sustainable, efficient, zero emission, whatever you want to call it, house. <clears throat> and we want to bring you all together to help teach the public also. So it starts with design, two-dimensional, on a sheet of paper or on a computer, however you want to do it. But the key point, there are two key points. One is you have to build a house and get that hands-on uh, education of actually building and learning how to build from start to finish. And the beautiful houses that have been built through the years, I'll show you a lot about the solar decathlon, where it's been held um, and the houses that have been in it. But you can see that these are beautiful houses that these student teams, these university teams build. Um, and it's a competition to see who can build the best house, not only in performance, but also in beauty and aesthetics uh, and design. So these are some of the interiors of houses of the past. And then the second key point of the solar decathlon competition is to demonstrate them, bring these houses together. They're small modular houses, but yet big enough for demonstration because the key is to educate the public also, only educating students, educating the professional community, but also the people who are going to live in the houses, all of them. And together, uh, we can help solve climate change if we are all educated. So it's a wonderful event because we invite the public to come into the houses, talk to the students, learn how they designed and built the houses, what are the functioning parts of it. And that's, that's very important. Uh, part of the competition. So it's a two-year competition for universities. It's, it is ambitious, but you do have two years to do this, to design and build. So on a, um, a typical team is, is usually about 100 students, campus-wide, multidisciplinary students. So you need architects and engineers but you also need communicators and interior design and landscape design, um, business uh, students who can help raise funds and pull the team together, management students. So it's, it's campus-wide uh, is what you're looking for, is building a team up within your universities and then building the house, uh, raise, um, and then, um, so that's the first two years of the competition, in a sense. You time it out. And then the two-month culmination is to, you, you make a modular house that you can transport, bring it to Dubai, uh, set the house up, and then run the competition. You will measure and score the house as well as you open it up and let the people come in and see it. So that's about a two-month period of time at the end of the two-year uh, project time. If, I hope that's clear. What I did here was put uh, typical 
calendar for our past event. <clears throat> it's about a month, and there is, um, I can show it here, the, kind of the orange color. From, from here is an assembly period. Had about nine days to assemble your house at the site. Then we run a competition over two weekends. Um, in the United States, weekends are when people have a lot of time to come uh, on their days off. You, um, in Europe, they've had a three-week competition, but typically it's a two-week competition. And then you take uh, the, disassemble the house, you have to pack it back up and take it back. Sometimes they're left there, but um, uh, that's typically then the process. Now, ahead of this time period, you know, you're on campus and you have to pack your house up and ship it to Dubai, and then on the back side, you have to get the house uh, to its final destination. I want to add that these houses are all used. They're, they're either put back on campuses. Uh, people live in them all around the United States. Um, uh, so the houses still have a lot of value after this competition. So this is uh, a picture from our competition in Irvine, California, uh, this past October, just a few months ago. And this is about one week into the assembly phase. You still see that there's a lot of materials around, and the, the student teams have uh, built their house. Uh, and when it's finally done, all the houses are finished. They're actually on block in this parking lot. Uh, but they look like finished houses uh, assembled in different ways. The decathlon gets its name from 10 contests, because I sat down and said, well, how do you evaluate a house? And so some of them are juried, as you see. It's at a 1,000 point contest, 100 points for 10 different ways. So uh, for architecture, we have a jury of professional architects who go through the houses and evaluate and score each house. So in this professional architecture jury's opinion, one house will stand out as the best designed, well-designed house, aesthetically pleasing, and they rank them down and you get points. We also have market appeal, which is what do people think of the house? You know, will it sell? Does it have buildability to it? And engineering, uh, uh, jury of experts in, in engineering will look at the engineering aspects, the heating and cooling, the system of uh, photovoltaic systems supplying electricity throughout the house, all those things of engineering nature. Communications is very important. We've got to get this story out, conveyed to the public, because we are trying to educate the public in addition to educating students. So web pages and brochures and communications, your tours to the um, people are very important. So we add that to our competition. Affordability, all houses had to be 250 US dollars, 250,000 US dollars or less in order to get the 100 points. We're trying to make the houses affordable. Comfort zone is heating and cooling within the house and humidity. So there were tight bands that the teams needed to maintain the indoor temperature and humidity of the house. So now um, these contests six through 10 are all measured and the other ones are subjective because they were juries, but comfort zone, we, we simply put uh, temperature uh, indicators in the house and you have to stay at a comfortable temperature. Appliances, you've got to wash clothes, cook meals, uh, run everything a, a normal family would do in their house, so you have to use energy. Home life is televisions and theaters and um, uh, doing dinner parties. It's your home life within it, which uses energy every day. We added for the first time uh, electric vehicles to our competition, so each team not only was providing energy off of their house, to provide all the energy for their house family functions, but also driving around. So they had to drive an electric vehicle 25 miles, about 35 kilometers every day in an electric vehicle. 
that is charged off the house. And then energy balances, at the end of the competition, you have to have a zero net meter. It shows that you only use solar energy to power your house the entire time. So if you do all those things, you can get 1,000 points, um, and the best team wins. So here's some photos that shows that inside the houses, you cook meals. Um, there are six students. So it's, think of it as a family of six uh, in the house. You have to cook meals and wash clothes and do these things. So here, this shows a picture inside a house doing that. So the students have to do these tasks to use the energy within the house, but at the same time, they give tours at certain times of the day, tours to the public to come through the house, look at it, and then they talk about their house, their strategy, the special features, the energy-saving features of the house as they go through that. Um, so that's a very important thing, but it keeps the students very busy all day long, not only running the competition, but then also uh, showing their house through tours. And many, many people come. The public loves this competition. They want to see what the universities, all the creativity that the universities have brought to the competition, and they come out and they line up and they want to go through the houses. Um, we've had at our competitions anywhere from 60 to 100,000 people who come over that uh, week and a half period. And then somebody wins. Uh, this is a, a photo of the Stevens University uh, who won our competition in October. And uh, a couple, actually, they're going to, um, AJ and Chris Ham are here. They're going to talk to you a little later this afternoon and give you the insight from a winning team's perspective. Uh, but this was a winning team. So where do you start? Uh, I've always dreamed of, in the design world, is to start with a clean sheet of paper. But in the solar decathlon, you start with just an empty piece of land. And then clear your mind and think, all right, what do you need in order to design a house? Um, where do you start? And here, think of it as, all right, what energy am I going to use? There's a couple of factors. So you need energy, and it needs to be clean and emission-free. Then you need a structure to build. But you also have to think of nature and biodiversity. You know, we don't need to teach uh, Mother Nature how to be sustainable. You know, life has been sustainable on Earth for millions of years. It's, it's humans who have come and kind of interrupting that sustainability. So you have to think of how you're going to live in a house on the Earth in a very sustainable uh, way with that. And then, of course, you've got to add people. These houses are designed to accommodate people, um, and that goes in, and then you use your creativity to come up with new designs. Our first solar decathlon was in 2002, right there on the National Mall. It started with an empty lot. I work right across from the National Mall. It just seemed like the perfect place to put it. Uh, and it was immediately successful uh, back then. Uh, how, solar houses open to the public uh, right in front of the national ca nation's capital. Quite fun. This is the winning house back in 2002 um, from the University of Colorado at Boulder. Um, beautiful house for the time. You can see where we came from. So ever since... Uh, we, we announced in 2003 that we'd hold this competition every two years, and we've been doing it every two years in the United States since. So I'm going to show you quickly some photos from that time period. Here is 2005 at another competition, and this was uh, Best Architecture, uh, won that one contest from Virginia Tech in, out of Blacksburg, Virginia. Beautiful house um, that they had. And we held another one in 2007. Um, and it, by then, you, the Europeans wanted to hold one because the University of Madrid had come over and participated in ours. So there was a competition in 2010 uh, in Madrid. Um, and we have Edwin here who's going to talk a little bit about the European perspective. Um, 2009, we held another one on the National Mall. Uh, this kind of looked at a bird's eye view of 20 houses uh, we would assemble together as a, a long uh, village, call it a village, 
Um, so this is on the National Mall in Washington. We moved it over to West Potomac Park in 2011, had a little different design of the village, but the houses are just amazing. And in 2011, this is University of Maryland that won first place, best architecture, beautiful design. And you can see now through the um, early years, everything focused on just the building and the energy. And then uh, eventually the circle got a little wider to include sustainability. What do you do with water runoff? Um, what's the vegetation around your house? Um, you know, how can you purify the water, gray water out of the house? So that's what University of Maryland started to do in 2011. And this, was, this came out of the university community. And you can see a green wall and they had a green roof on this house. Um, this is a, a viewpoint at night, uh, beautiful, uh, with the lights on in, in the evening. And then it occurred to me uh, of what a, a, another benefit out of the solar decathlon is actually it's pushing the envelope out. It's accelerating research and development because these students, here it shows a 2002 house from Maryland, a 2007 and then a winning house in 2011. The same with Virginia Tech, 2002, 2005, and then a winning house in 2009. And all these students learn from one another and then go back to the drawing board and redesign with better knowledge. And then they do a second generation and then they learn again and they go back and do a third generation. And now you see exactly what a, a a key benefit of the solar decathlon is, is just making real improvement over time. Uh, 2012, Madrid did a, a second one. Uh, and this, this, now the Europeans said, well, let's come up with some designs for denser housing that we see a lot in and around cities. And so uh, the university here um, from Grenoble built came and brought to the competition the top story of a multi-story housing unit. And it was just exquisite. It was beautiful at one first place architecture as well as the competition. And this top floor, which was a community floor that all eight families would, would benefit from and use, um, then was, had photovoltaics uh, on, the, on the ceiling and around the sides. And it was just a beautiful space up on the top of this house. But the key here was, is we we're starting to branch into larger density housing solutions. Uh, that French team from Grenoble that won made such an impact, France wanted to do one in 2014, and they actually put it right on Versailles, the grounds of Versailles in Paris. So that was a wonderful uh, historic place to have a solar decathlon. Again, you can see some of these houses are starting to reach up and be two-story houses. Uh, in the United States, we keep them one-story houses uh, for ease of transport. Um, and this is uh, the team that won uh, the competition in Versailles, in Paris, uh, in 2014. And actually, we have Shara here. She's going to, the faculty advisor from this team is going to speak this afternoon. Uh, but that was a wonderful house uh, that, that there. And they were from Italy. The largest, most impressive uh, solar decathlon just in, in size and people and attendance was in China in 2013 in Datong, China, uh, where 250,000 people came. The Chinese just fell in love with this competition, wanted to see a lot of Western design, a lot of international design, and they would line up for hours uh, to come through these houses. And that was a, a really great international event in China. Uh, we held then an event in 2013 in Irvine, California. Uh, I moved it from out of Washington, D.C., from the East Coast to the West Coast, uh, put it out in California. Um, in 2013, great set of teams. This is the winning team. A, a European came over and beat all the Americans with a very exquisite house. This is a, a university in Vienna, Austria, or just in Austria. Um, beautiful house there. <coughs> so 
the decathlon advances technologies. These students, the researchers, look at what's available. They also come up with new ideas. And it's, it's the, the forerunner of what's to come in the commercial sector. So here's a sampling of technologies that were introduced at the Solar Decathlon, actually proven at the Decathlon, and then eventually got into the marketplace. So it's phase change materials, energy efficient sealing, uh, dehumidification and desiccant systems, structural insulated panels. We saw those in 2002 and, you know, it was kind of like new technology. Now it's pretty um, standard technology out there. The home control functions, were, we saw those early on in the decathlon before you could even get one in a store. Um, so the decathlon brings all these technologies, all these components of a house uh, and, and advances those and, and starts to introduce them. And because it's a contest, it also proves their viability. You know, does it work, you know, um, in the first place? And so with all that in the past, I've led you up to this year's competition. And so the technologies that we saw from the, the work at the universities was a, a jigsaw house that was computer cut. And I want to show you about that one. That was really cool. But solar electric DC, DC direct water heaters we saw in coming in 2015. Uh, electric vehicle charging, different um, schemes for doing that very efficiently. Smart thermostats, rainwater and gray water filtration systems, uh, things of that nature were coming we, um, for this year's competition that we just had. And typically, you, you build a modular unit on your campus and it's easy to ship, you know, across the country or put it, you know, in a shipping container and, and bring it to a port and then unload it and bring it to a site. But what Clemson University did, which was so fun, is they emailed their house from, because Clemson is on the East Coast and the competition was on the West Coast, they euphemistically said, we'll email our house to California. And what they did is, it was all CNC design, so they, um, to be cut by jigsaws, you know, out in California. They got the parts in California and then assembled it in California without shipping a house there. So this shows day one, and you see a truck up here just full of all these pieces that were cut by a jigsaw, computer-aided uh, jigsaw. And the team came in, 40 students, two shifts a day, and just built this from the ground up right there in California with all these thousands of pieces uh, that just snapped together. Uh, they, they used no nails or screws. They had zip ties for everything, very few, I should say. And, it, um, and they would work till 2 a.m. in the night and then come back at 7. Um, and so you see how much they did in one day. And if you look real close, you can see zip ties holding these pieces together that snap together. It was just amazing. I'm showing it to you. It's, it was a unique way to build and bring a house to California. Um, and by day three, they had it up. Some um, siding was starting to go up. They actually put a, a aluminum metal cladding siding on the house that had a, a space about uh, three centimeters that the hot air would go up from the house. So there was a little um, uh, air could get in there uh, and take the heat from the sun so it wouldn't come into the house. And there you can see this was a sandwich of um, uh, about one, one and a half centimeters with a plastic in the middle, but it's aluminum, which these students also designed on the computer, uh, had cut, and then they bent these pieces um, themselves to then all fit up on the side of the house. So they put up that next. They even had a little design around the windows that helped shade the windows. Uh, then they put a, a deck space that was also holding uh, some of the photovoltaic modules up on it. And when it was done, this was their house um, from Clemson University. So I show that as, as kind of a fun way. There are different ways to design, build your house, and bring it. And that's the beauty of the solar decathlon is that there are so many different ways to approach the same problem. Uh, how do you design and build a house? 
But Stevens University, I already showed this, I have it in there twice, won the competition uh, and, and beat Clemson um, at it. Now I want to show you uh, this past December in South America, for the first time they held one uh, in uh, Cali, Colombia. And they took off on the European uh, model of the decathlon, let's get denser housing uh, for the city of Cali, Colombia. So they brought in, this shows the house, but it's also the top floor of a higher density um, solution. Um, here's another, uh, they had all these models out that people could come and look at. So that again was the top floor um, of a higher density solution. So, uh, but, th so then they just bring essentially the top floor to demonstrate to the public or just one floor um, of a multiplayer. And, and the competition in Cali was inspiring. It, it was different. Um, the housing there used a lot of bamboo. You know, what you want to do is use your local materials and, and your local methods um, and come up with sustainable solutions. This house was totally out of bamboo except for the um, iron or, or steel structure of the house, very open. It could move walls around, move floors around inside of it. Um, here's a house with bamboo on the outside. Very um, great ways to, to use local materials, which is a very sustainable one, bamboo. Um, and then the inside, it was very appropriate technology. So you saw uh, the Americans and the Europeans uh, competitions had three, four, 500,000 US dollar houses, very expensive, but very plush. In Cali, they were, they were probably twenty-five to $50,000 houses, more appropriate technology is what I call it, um, but very effective nonetheless. Um, shows you some interior shots of houses that were very um, affordable uh, over there. But the people loved it, None, it didn't matter. This was amazing to the people of Cali. This was an opening press conference uh, to, to let the press know that this competition was starting. It, w it made headline news every day in Cali and in Colombia. A lot of dignitaries and officials came from Bogota um, to it. So the very first day before the public tours were even open, people were lining up. So a couple students um, from the house from Uruguay are standing on the balcony there talking to students before they were allowed to come in their house, or to, to the public, I should say. And, and tons of people came, about 70,000, I think, over there, a week and a half, um, to see these houses. It was a big hit. So I had a lot of fun in Cali, Colombia here. It gets very hot there, too. It's uh, close to the equator, uh, and people use umbrellas to keep the sun off of them, but they lined up to see these houses. So let's uh, talk for a minute about the very first solar decathlon in the Middle East. Very exciting. And I, I showed you Europe and, and uh, South America as a way to show that what, what you, how you, you structure your 10 contests to address the local needs of your region, which is the Middle East, can be done in different ways, and I'm, I'm excited about what uh, DIWA is doing here, um, and they've, they've changed uh, the 10 contests a little bit. Each one of these are worth a thousand or a hundred points. It's still a thousand point contest. Um, so they do have architecture and engineering and construction, energy management, how you're gonna power your house and comfort con conditions, very similar to, to US and Europe. But they've added environmental acoustics to it, very intriguing. Um, house functioning and just, um, is similar to what ours is. Sustainability, they're actually gonna judge how sustainable is the house, and that's just what the South Americans did. You know, by using a lot of bamboo, that's a very sustainable material. And then sustainable vegetation, um, something very uh, important to Middle East where it's so dry, it's, it's you know, and water is a big issue. So sustainable vegetation around the house, how you're gonna accommodate for that and plan for it, is, it will be important in the Middle East competition. And then communication and innovation, of course, 
uh, is in it. So I, I'm intrigued and I'm excited uh, to see in two years the outcome of all these houses here in the Middle, in the Middle East. So the solar decathlon, just to give you some good talking points, it accelerates market acceptance for sustainable housing. It teaches the public about energy efficiency and renewable energy. Teaching the public is very important. They need to know what they can do to help um, eliminate climate change. It de develops a larger, well-educated, clean energy workforce. And I'm gonna show you a slide next for all the students who will be interested. It really helps uh, you in your careers, in your education um, for the workforce. It accelerates research and development and innovation. I showed you that, how it's the iterative design process uh, to get that innovation going. It showcases your university's capabilities, not only to the th 100,000 people who come, but also in the media. Um, so it really shows your university, and it rewards the best and brightest student architects and engineers. We make heroes out of you. You're on television. You're, you're you know, right out there in front showing what you can do. So it's a great, great competition. And we conducted, so this is for the students, we conducted an evaluation in 2011 interviewing students who participated in uh, the Solar Decathlon. And 76% of them get employed in the clean energy fields, five times as many as their peers. 92% said that the Decathlon helped them get a job. So you either go through school and do your classwork or you add on Oh, I also designed and built a house that was solar powered and completely sustainable. Well, if an employer is looking at those two, who do you think they're going to hire? 16% uh, of the students changed their majors to clean energy industry, and that's great. 16% started a, their own clean energy business. So they, be, they took that entrepreneurialism out into the private world and started their own jobs. We can, we can cite many cases of that. And then 100% uh, of them, of course, said that they learned more through this than they would have otherwise in their classrooms. So it's a great, great thing. Cumulative benefits, we've had 126 university teams um, representing 176 universities. So a lot of uh, teams team with, it's like two or three universities get together. So one university might have a strength in architecture and then another university might have a strength in engineering, and the two of them come together. Whatever it is, we've had community colleges in the United States, which are two-year colleges, team with four years um, and get that expertise and that interaction going. So that's why the number of total um, universities is different, is because that is allowed for you to team with two, another university. Actually, we've had European universities team with American universities and bring that cross-cultural transfer together, which is very helpful. Over 2,000 students uh, have participated, or 20,000 students have participated, 2.6 million house visits. So we count how many people come into each house, and we've had 2.6 million house visits through 2015. That's a lot of people going through a lot of houses. O over 2 billion media impressions per event because there's so many news stories. Uh, the, the press is there, they're filming, they're doing documentaries. We want that information put out into the public. So it's very uh, media oriented. Um, so <clears throat> I want to finish with a message to you that, you know, you students are our best hope. And just a couple weeks ago in December, all the leading presidents and leaders of the world got together in Paris for the climate change talks. You, you all know this, I'm sure. And it's, it's just wonderful because they actually reached on a global climate agreement. They reached that agreement and that's great. That's top level. That's all the politicians, all the leadership and, and we are so glad they finally came together and did that. But the thought occurred to me, and, and I was at the South American, the Latin American competition at the time, that 
well, who's going to do it? Okay, it's one great thing to come up with an accord, an agreement to reach, but who's going to do it? And, and it's the people, the students, you are going to do it. Who's going to implement all these great plans? And it takes the students and universities to do it. So I showed some pictures of the, the event in Cali. And the decathlon is one way, feet on the ground, you know, hands on the, on the equipment to actually do it, implement it, um, to find solutions to the climate change. So the decathlon coming to the Middle East is just super. I'm so happy for it because you're going to show the world how to reach success. And we invite you, the students and the faculty, the universities, to win the world's greatest challenge right here in Dubai. And with that, I thank you. Um, for that presentation, and I don't know how much time I took, but do we have time for questions and answers, anything like that, or just move on? Does anyone have any questions? I'm sure you do. The moment, okay. Well, we, oh, I see a hand here. Yes, it's hard to see. There's a microphone, it's coming. Uh, Dr. Sahar Karufa from Ajman University. Uh, can a, t a team be formed from more than one university because we don't have specializations in all of these 10 uh, parts? Yes. Can uh, a university team with another university bring more expertise to the project? And the answer is yes. We encourage that. We also encourage teaming with professionals. You know, if you have an architecture firm or a builder, um, out there with expertise, a solar company. Uh, yes, you can do that too. Yeah. Hello. Any other questions? Yes. Um, Bassem al from the Higher Colleges of Technology in Dubai. Um, do you think putting another parameter in evaluation where you look at the materials um, to make sure that materials used are recyclable this is something important that, uh, you know, in construction. Recyclable, yeah. not just sustainable. Thank you. Yes. Many, many of the materials in the house are recycled materials. Uh, they make recycled materials into furniture, uh, all kinds of things. Um, actually, the building products, a lot of them were recycled products. It is in the competition that's called sustainability, the juries will be looking for that. It is, it is not a hard and fast requirement that every material in the house has to be recycled, but the more the better. Uh, and so you will score higher uh, probably with more uh, recycled materials in your house for the sustainability jury. Yeah, good question. Uh, Dr. Faisal uh, Safi from UAE University Align. Uh, quick question here. I, <clears throat> in terms of, uh, you know, it's a solar decathlon. So the students, they see like it's a race, racing for something, right? So isn't that would be interesting also to give them a perspective, both to them and the industry, about the goals about this decathlon, meaning that what we are really looking for uh, in the long term, are we looking to build yeah, we are looking like to build smart cities, sustainable cities, uh, green cities like that. Is there any interest in the, in the industry to build such things? Is there any interest financially, both financially, uh, economically, uh, as well as environment-wise, uh, environment uh, to actually uh, show it also to the students where we are leading, where we are going with this race? That would be also interesting for them to give them a perspective about the race we're going and what we are going to reach, basically. Thank you. Yes. Um, well, the goal is certainly uh, the, the very broad goal of the whole competition and why we're here is climate change and sustainability on a world level, you know, to spread this competition around the world. And so whether it's, it's a small community, a small village, or a large city, it's all about how do we live sustainability. Now, the practicality of this competition is that we have to bring something demonstrable uh, that's feasible in a, in a relatively short period of time 
and you know to, to physically bring it to a, uh, a common spot, a common place here in Dubai. So we work with what we have, but the larger picture, yes, is you know how do we live in cities together? Um, how can you extrapolate what you've learned in this relatively small house to larger problems around the world? Um, so that's certainly all right there. Mm -hmm. I, I have to move on because there's other speakers. And I do know that we have at the end, the panel, every speaker will be up here to answer more questions. And you'll get more questions as now we're going to work down uh, into more detailed layers by having some of the team members uh, actually speak this afternoon who actually went through the process of building these homes. So again, I'm just so delighted to be here, looking forward to this competition. And uh, we'll be around all day to answer questions. Thank you very much.